This is the AM News on the AM Show. Let's get into the details. Chairperson of the National Commission for Civic Education, Ms. Kathleen Adi, has cautioned politicians to desist from campaigns based on ethnicity and religion as it may threaten the peace of the country. Speaking at a dialogue organized by Her Outfit on the Prevention Containing Violence Extremism Program in WA, Ms. Adi emphasized the external threats facing Ghana due to instability in neighboring West African sub-regions, urging politicians and politics and political parties to prioritize tolerance and refrain from ethnic and religious campaigns that could undermine national peace. Join News' Upper West Regional Correspondent, Rafik Salam, reports from WA. The National Commission for Civic Education, NCCE, convened a critical dialogue as part of efforts to address potential threats of violent extremism and terrorism during the forthcoming election under the European Union-sponsored project codenamed Prevention Containing Violence Extremism, PBCE, in Ghana. Stakeholders at the dialogue discussed strategies to promote tolerance and to ensure peaceful elections amid rising security concerns. The event themed promoting a culture of tolerance, a catalyst for peaceful election amid threats of violence extremism, and has called the agency of proactive measures to safeguardness and security. Chairperson of the NCCE, Ms. Catherine Adi, warned that this year's election is peculiar due to the external threats facing the West African sub-region. This election year is peculiar due to this external threat we face. And today we want to make the point that this election year, more than ever, we need to foster a culture of tolerance so that violent extremists and other malign forces do not take advantage of our vulnerability stemming from intense political campaign. She calls some politicians to resist from campaign based on ethnicity and religion as it may threaten the peace of the country. Ethnicity-based campaigns whereby political actors will say, because I'm from this place and you are also from this place, I deserve your vote. Or I am the one that you should vote for. Or I'm your natural ally because I come from where you come from. The threat that we face, the actors who represent that threat, always look for divisions amongst people where they can insert themselves, amplify differences, amplify disagreements, and take advantage of that to disrupt states. So religious intolerance is another uh, avenue for people to promote general intolerance and therefore create deeper divisions and therefore make us more vulnerable as a country. The dialogue featured a talk-provoking panel discussion which featured persons from varied backgrounds. Daniel Osei-Bonsu from the National Security, Dr. Tobias Shiri from AZD Yobits, and Abu Dukowi al Hassan from CAPEX. When we touch on issues of violent extremism, radicalization, terrorism, sometimes we make a very difficult notion by stating that there is a coming anarchy. There's something coming from somewhere. But I'm sorry, I have to disappoint you. The threat is already with you. We're already dealing with the threat. It's with us. Normally, we talk about media sensationalism, but the one point we normally make is the point about giving on equal access to actors in the political space. For one thing, I doubt. Today, if you interview me from party A and don't interview my colleague from party B, you are engaged in an exclusionary action. Within this context of discussion, I would say that even if you are intentionally using your political power to intentionally exclude any individual from accessing state resources, you are a terrorist. You are a terrorist. So in discussing terrorism or extremism, we need to ground our discussion within our context-related factors. Participants engage in an open forum sharing insights and concerns about election security and the role of communities in safeguarding peace. We must learn or we must teach people that there are consequences to certain kinds of behaviors. So if you were violent in an election and the police gets hold of you, 
we must all learn to contribute to allow the law to take its course. And I think that a lot of these problems we are talking about start with the embassy that we promote in our communities and everywhere. As Ghana braces for a pivotal election, the dialogue served as a timely reminder of the need for vigilance and unity in the face of evolving security threats. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam. Wow. Former CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Akwesi Ose, is pushing for the implementation of a mental health levy as a crucial step towards the development of mental health in Ghana. Speaking at the launch of a book, Letters of Hope to My Younger Self, spearheaded by the Abakato Anda and Zob, uh, Zob Baraka, he emphasized the importance of political will in supporting this initiative, citing the already passed mental health law and policy as a framework for such actions. Dear Mary, the book, Letters of Hope to My Younger Self, featuring letters written by prominent Ghanaians to their younger selves, was spearheaded by Abba Ketu Anda and Zoe Baraka. It aims to inspire and uplift today's youth by sharing the wisdom gained from life experiences. Speaking at the launch, Abba Ketu Anda emphasized the importance of activities like journaling in promoting mental health. It's incumbent upon us to talk about mental health, to talk about ways of strengthening our mental wellness. It's a hygiene, it's like hygiene, like physical health. Mental health and wellness is a, involves practices. You know, physically you get up, you brush your teeth, you take a shower, practices. Spiritually, you say your prayers and so on, and that's spiritual health. Well, for mental health as well, there's specific practices that one should practice, not just when the times are tough, but every day, you know, uh, and, and these are things like journaling, learning how to express your feelings, learning how to, when things go bad, reframe the situation and find the good in it or the hope for a better tomorrow. Zoe Baraka highlighted the role of reading and building a mentally resilient society, urging increased government investment in this area. I'm so glad she talked about journaling, and that's what storytelling does. When you, when you hear other people's stories, it gives you hope to realize that you too can get out of where you're coming from. So honestly, when you asked about what we would recommend to the government, is to honestly pour a lot of money or resources into reading and into libraries and into uh, giving people the power to be able to share stories in safe spaces. Former head of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Kwisiose, called on the government to show commitment to mental health policies and laws, including passing the mental health levy for improved services. We have a mental health law, we have a mental health policy. All it requires is for us to adhere to the law, adhere to the policy, and we are through. Everything we need, we need to ensure mental health is taken care of, is there in the law or in the policy. But the, the political will for us to implement, that is what is lacking. For instance, the law talks about the implementation of a mental health tax or levy. And we don't have the will to implement the tax. I know this is not the best time to talk about taxes. Uh, the president is trying to remove a lot of taxes, I know. But this is a tax with a difference. A tax with a difference. And I believe that if you ask any average Ghanaian, that what you make out of a tax to help with mental health care, everybody will say, let's have it. So we need to have the will to implement the tax. Once we implement it, and we implement all the aspects of the law and the policy, we are good. He also lauded Abakato Anda and Zoe Baraka for spearheading the project. So this is a great book because it gives insights to our younger colleagues, our younger selves, what it is, the experience they require in life as they are growing up, the mistakes we made in life, which we would want them not to make similar mistakes. So it's a wonderful book, a book it's a great book. And as it's, it's, it settles your mind, it also helps with your mental health. Because everything you do is your mind. If your mind is at peace, you are also at peace and everything will move fine. So it's a great book that I recommend to every young person growing up. Contributors to the book include legal practitioners such as Ace Anan Ankuma, Robert Ni Adeklek, Joyce Ba Mokhtari, 
They shared their personal struggles and successes, offering valuable insights for the younger generation. Special aid to former President John Mahama Joyce Babuk Tari says she's proud and happy about what her younger selves was able to achieve. So I'm living all the dreams of my parents, and I wish my father had lived long enough to see me and see all of us. But my biggest inspiration will certainly always be my parents, my mother in particular. I celebrate her each and every opportunity that I get because she believed in her daughters. She gave us every opportunity and opened every door that she possibly could through the baking, through the shena, through the creams that she was making, through the clothes that she made for us. I am today my mother's daughter and largely my father's daughter. Let's do some Easter Rhapsody now because the Joy FM Easter Soup Kitchen train was at a senior correctional centre formerly known as Bostol Institute to spend some good time with inmates. The prison facility is home to 10 of minors who are sentenced to jail for various crimes. The Joy FM team, led by programs manager Edem Naite, took the Easter Soup Kitchen to the inmates, spreading some hope and love to inmates. James Aveji has more in the following report. Just like tradition, your superstition, Joy 99.7 FM, held this year's Easter Soup Kitchen at the Senior Correctional Center, formerly called Bostal Institute, to break bread and dine with inmates. Clad in their traditional orange-colored uniforms, the over 60 prisoners were mostly less than 18 years guarded in the Holo Church Auditorium at the heart of Boston to once again worship and listen to messages of hope. Programs manager Joy FM Adam Naiti first explains reason for the gathering. Every year on either Easter Sunday or Easter Monday, what we do is that we go out and we share with our brothers and sisters who are underprivileged, just to mean that um, sometimes they don't have so much. Um, we've gone around a lot of places and this year we decided that we want to come and spend some time with you. In the midst of the merrymaking, I caught up with some of the inmates who shared their stories with me. One of them, Weku, not his real name, was still a teenager, said he was charged with defiling a fellow 16-year-old girlfriend at the time and was sentenced to three years in prison. How old were you then? 16 years. Yes, sir. But now, I say, Sam Renin, you know, we near the army then. She, me, she. So, my mother. You started smoking at 16. They send the girl to hospital and they do some. Uh, and the doctor, her uh, text, the doctor uh, told them that someone have slept with. Uh, so, I was just then. They came to arrest me, so they sent me to the police station. The police station, and they take me through the court process. What did they charge you with in court? A defamation. How old was she? Was well, 16 years. The, girl the two of you were 16, 16 years. Yes, sir. So, uh, so they took me through the court process, and I was jailed for two years. He says since he was brought in two and a half years ago, his mother whom he stayed with at the time, never came to visit him. He believes his mom is still angry at the turn of his life, despite her several warnings and advice. He wished he would meet her someday and tell her how sorry he is. So my mother used to wake me up early in the dawn, maybe about uh, around 4 o'clock. Then he would start advising me, advising me, but... I didn't, didn't, I refused to listen, so. Do you look forward to seeing her? Yes, sir. Or you wish you won't go back to her? Oh, sir, I wish I would go out and see her. If you go and meet her for the first time, what would you tell her? Oh, <laughs> I would just plead to her that all what I did, I've regretted. So he should what, find a place in her heart and forgive me. 
His colleague Mensa, also not his real name, who was 17 years at the time, said his offense is a crime he didn't commit. Murder of a colleague student. So at that time, uh, we started fighting. Ah, so my friend is talking about fighting with the junior. Yeah, with the junior. So I decided to slap his face by, like he block it. So the time he block it now, uh, like, ah, like he started, like he the shake. So like he's forcing to wake up by, he cannot. So the eyes is doing like, the eyes is pumping, and like, yeah, coffee, yeah, foam is coming. Tia ko hospital na headmaster mu uru emergency room mo ba na. Asimo kachi mi say. You kill someone. Looking back, he wished he could turn the hand of time to undo what had happened. This and come wa botra na say like and come swim bibi say o fro bia. Na so so ma o so jan mo kana say me nim ni die bi say like o fro bia na so ma na kire say ni pa no bibi won ho e so jama ni ko. Mensa has an advice for the youth. Mensa me catch you mo say abra bo no ye small boy na o si so I was say oba form. And I was say o dey dey be two team say say o ye gigigigigigigigigig na o nya asem a. Like o ye gigigigigig no. O nya nya asem a o hu ne say o dey wa na o ye oga. But I say o nya asem a. And I be hu say o gigigig na o ye no. E nko ba bia. Resident pastor and joy of Michael Abose shared words of encouragement with the inmate and prayed with them. Nothing goes for life. It is the desire of many to grow up, you know, amongst their family. But how things happen along the line before you realize you are somewhere else. But the most important thing is that you need to know who God is. Because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. May they continue to be under your shepherdship and rulership. We shall be careful to say thank you when these ones go out and become great personalities. When they go out to become excellent personalities. When they grow out to become that which you've intended for them. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The team handed packs of food, assorted drinks, water and other items to the inmates. The superintendent in charge of operations, Abbas Bio Sama, expressed appreciation at the kind gesture. I'm so happy to the extreme because uh, normally what we need is to get people from outside coming to our aid like this. Our reformatory system, in fact, the government is doing his best to ensure that we reform this image. But the best is not enough. So normally we rely on these philanthropies and these NGOs to come to our aid. After all the excitement and the jamboree that took the minds of these teenagers off their predicament temporarily, it was now time to leave them to their fate, to continue the daily battles and face the consequences of their actions. Even as the gate of Buster closed behind them, boys shall indeed rise again. James Savage, James Camp Prison Senior Correctional Center, Accra. Right, now that the Easter is over, let's move on. Muslims observing the holy month of Ramadan have two main meals, the Iftar and the Shuhur. In this edition of our Ramadan series, we throw light on the Iftar meal, which is a fast-breaking evening meal taken by Muslims after the Azan. It's called to signify the end of the day's fast. My colleague Anas Sabit has more in the following report. Basically, Iftar means breaking the fast. It could be either at the end of the day, when the sun sets and Muslims are breaking their fast. And it could, it could also be wrapping up the month of Ramadan. Iftar traditions are celebrated all around the world with celebrations, togetherness and sumptuous meals. Traditionally, 
Ramadan fast is broken with dates, water, and then followed by a light meal. However, there are a range of food items that are made especially during Ramadan and are known all over the world. This feast of breaking the fast is usually done in a much more celebrated format in advanced Muslim countries. Hardly do you see it observed in such a manner in our neighborhoods here in Ghana. Malam Imran Armiao shares with us the relevance of this meal particularly when held together as observed today. When we come together uh, in people to observe the iftar, it's more or less like a means of socializing, getting into contact with one another, the feeling that is uh, the difference between an individual iftar and coming together collectively to observe the iftar. In this era of economic recessions where households are going through loss and loss of difficulties, Malam Imran Armiao says organizing community iftars like this attracts loss of rewards. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he do encourage wealthy people or those who are having a backbone to support those people who do, doesn't have a support, especially in the month of Ramadan. Coupled with the fact that nowadays there is economic hardship, so anyone who has a lot, feeding a needy or a person who doesn't have anything on him, is more important at this time than feeding the person at any other ordinary time. To the masses who thronged the residence of the Zungu chief, al Haji Awesu Alassan Musa Sari, where this iftar was observed, this outstanding act of kindness is unprecedented, particularly for people of Tichiman and its environs. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. In fact, I don't know where to start. I'm much happier. I have been seeing this outside Ghana, most especially the Arab countries, and other countries. But today, because of Ajia and Dia, Martin Sariki, today I have witnessed this. So we are much grateful. Ajia and Dia, may Allah bless you. Senche, eh, one abu abune de iki ba kuwa ke iye yiba. Saadi na muna gani ko loka chikin video muke gani de chikin movies as horrors. Amayo, ya tabata munga ni azahiri. Tanu kwa gashina ya ike uja ma adagida ada waji na mata muda mazo muduka mungu saduri guda ya bari mungu gajuna muna muna kwa muna faraha. Ni iri mwana abu haka ya uni faruku wang abinda ni nafara zamaka iri haiti ibu rahaka na samu kade geba shima na nana nuna maba shisa kaduka gamu mui wanga taru anza una kuma anchi masha Allah baga jamaa wa like my short words were noisy, massive. Mr. Sari, since I started Ramadan Mubarak, you break it fast across the areas. Me who say you break it fast by way the strong cooker. The man can say Alhamdulillah. Others who could not hide their excitement were thankful to the Zongo chief and the family for their generosity and prayed for more of such engagements. What I want to say is that may Almighty Allah bless Sanki Zungu and his wife. <laughs> may, may she never lack. Whatever she removes, may she get more than that. Inshallah, in fact, I'm very happy for that. Malam Noaim Musa admonishes wealthy Muslims to endeavor to spending their wealth in the cause of Allah by spending to feed the poor. You spend your wealth in the cause of Allah and do not put yourself into distraction. So we should um, leading them and also giving them the advice that they should spend their wealth in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they do so, they are going to gain the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Joy News, Tichiman. And on that note, we wrap up for the AM News. Up next, exports from Muftaw Nabila Abdullah. Stay with us.